Adrian Schmidt, currency strategist at Lloyd's TSB. Adrian, thank you so much for coming in. In terms of what we're seeing, last week was really a lot of the refuge currencies that were uh, taking quite an upswing because investors didn't know what to put their money. Now there's speculation that there will be some kind of concerted action, and that's driving the yen a little bit lower, as is a Swiss franc. Are we going to get some kind of central bank action altogether this week? I doubt it, to be honest. The, the safe havens, though, have already started to look uh, rather dangerous because, obviously, when, when you get high enough and volatile enough, uh, it's dangerous Doesn't in both directions. So safe yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, Japan shot themselves in the foot a little bit last week by saying that uh, they were only going to intervene when it was a surprise. And since they'd been, into, been warning about oh, it for yeah. three weeks, everyone thought they're not going to intervene so it's because it's not going to be a surprise so the yen tested the lows and made took some stops out lower down but it's bounced a little bit overnight but it's really quite stable euro swiss of course is very violent um, yeah and, and the swiss central bank actually tried to do everything it could it also talked at some point of actually pegging it to the euro which in the end it didn't do but it seems that it's just a, a central bank that is too weak to act alone well there's uh, there's still talk of course of it being pegged to the euro in the swiss press over the weekend they're talking about eventually a peg around 120 I, and to be honest, how they get it there is the, is the difficult question. I wouldn't say they're too weak to act alone. I mean, of course, in 2009-10, they actually held it at 150, which was the wrong level, for about nine months before the Greek crisis overtook them. Um, and I think that shows that if, they, if they're prepared to spend enough money, then they can hold it for a but time. But sometimes, does it not backfire? Every, if the central bank decides to intervene, if it doesn't put enough or if expectations well, you are have too to be high, committed. Then, yes, yeah. you have to be committed, and, and I think you have to do it at the right level, and you have to. It has to be seen as something that's sustainable. And I think if they if they intervened here, and maybe put the proceeds into European periphery bonds, then it would be a double whammy, and it might actually give them some support. I mean, that's too probably too radical a step for the Swiss National Bank to take, but but certainly it would be more credible to be buying Euro Swiss here than it was at 150. So, Adrian, talk to me. What you're expecting actually from the week. We'll have, of course, that very important speech from Ben Bernanke in Jackson Hole. That will give us a little bit of a flavor whether QE3 is on the cards or not. Is that going to be the main driver for currencies? Well, certainly that'll be something to watch. I think um, there's not a huge amount of data at this stage, but uh, it's the hard data what we really need to see. Um, because at the moment there have been a lot of surveys that have suggested weakness, um, but the surveys are probably influenced by the dive in the equity markets, the downgrade, and so forth. Um, it, the hard data, the U.S. industrial production numbers, the U.S. retail sales numbers, have actually been okay. So I think if we get a bit more of that, we might see the market lift a bit. I don't think Bernanke is going to commit himself to very much at Jackson Hole. Clearly, there's no deflation in the U.S. at the moment, and that really is the, the requirement to get any QE3. But uh, he's on the dovish side. So, so what would be your advice to investors who want to play a bit of currencies this week? Uh, prudence or, or getting into, for example, some Swiss buying? Well, I think uh, prudence, of course, is, is always it's good advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, at the moment, uh, even with a weaker equity market on Friday, we didn't really see a lot of strength in the dollar. In fact, the dollar was quite soft. Um, we didn't even see much in the yen or, or, or the Swiss franc. The Swiss franc was volatile. Um, I think, if anything, sterling is looking like the best safe haven at the moment. Um, somewhat oddly, perhaps. But uh, with, Is it, it odd? I, I find it odd. Uh, also well, in terms of yields, but I guess you know, we're better in the UK than we're in Europe. Well, of course, if in 2008, the currencies that did the best were the ones with the lowest yields yields um, because everyone's short of them and I think that's still the case now sterling has the lowest real yield so everyone's probably to some extent short of sterling and sterling obviously compared to the euro it has its own currency so there's not as much debt concern maybe it's not as much debt concern as the US it's still AAA um, and there's not as much volatility as there is in uh, the yen and the Swiss because when you get into a safe haven you've always got to worry about what might happen if things don't go wrong that, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so sterling gives you a reasonable each way bet I don't think it's going to go down very much against the traditional safe safe havens in, if bad news happens, but it will probably go up significantly against them if, if good news turns. So. Yeah, all right, so a little bit of sterling buying, possibly. Adrian, possibly. thank you so much, Adrian Schmidt there.